Hi, my name is Jacob Tingen, and I'm the managing partner of Tingen and Williams. Today, I'm going to be talking about Form I-944. It's a new uh, piece of the permanent residency application, and we're going to talk about the documentation or evidence requirements for that form, all the things that you'd need to submit for this adjustment of status process uh, here in a bit. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about Form I-944. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a new form that accompanies the green card application. And uh, what I'm going to do today is go through each of the pieces of evidence in, in a broad strokes format. Uh, below in the video description, you'll find links to a webinar that we'll be hosting, and we'll be hosting webinars regularly on this topic. Uh, and in that webinar, we'll go in detail through each of the forms uh, and each of the pieces of evidence that you would need to prove the different aspects of, of the legal requirements of those forms. Uh, and we'll also talk about RFEs, requests for evidence, and other aspects in the webinar. So this video is just kind of give you broad strokes, and if you want the details, attend our webinar, and we'll give you uh, the best information we can. And then if you choose to hire us, we'll give you specific counsel for your specific legal matter, and, and, and we would love to do that for you. Uh, so let's just kind of review some of the evidence that we would look for in a potential um, green card application. And then we'll specifically focus uh, in this video on the kinds of things you need to, to prove for that I-944. Um, and to give you a quick overview, the I-944 is a new form. And it came about as a result of this uh, heightening of the public charge standard uh, from the Trump administration. There was a long legal battle and we weren't sure as practitioners if uh, this public charge standard was actually going to be allowed to be heightened in this way or not. Uh, but the courts did choose in favor of the Trump administration, uh, at least for now. Um, and so they're, they're, the result of that is the Form I-944, the Declaration of Self-Sufficiency. In the past, the U.S. citizen petitioner merely needed to provide transcripts of their taxes and demonstrate that the annual household income was above the federal poverty guidelines. And that pretty much uh, resolved the, the calculus for public charge. Uh, under this, the immigrant themselves, under Form I-944, the immigrant themselves has to prove that they have skills, talents, income, and ability to overcome the, the public charge uh, grounds of inadmissibility to the U.S. So it could prevent you from getting a green card if you don't document this well enough, okay? Um, so just to kind of give you a sense of the documentation you'll need to, to prove, uh, in, in this kind of application, we're going to start from everything you'd need for an I-130 through an I-45, and more specifically, the I-944. Uh, so this is contemplating an adjustment of status process. That means you're applying for the green card from within the United States. That's called adjustment of status. Uh, the idea means that you have status and you're adjusting that status to a green card. Um, and under the concept that you're an immediate relative of a U.S. citizen. So that's the perspective we're using here. And an immediate relative is the spouse, parent, or minor child of a U.S. citizen. So the first thing you'd need to show is that the petitioner is a citizen. So you're going to have to prove that with a U.S. passport, a birth certificate. If you're a naturalized citizen, then that certificate of naturalization. Not too complicated. The next thing you'd want to prove is the relationship between the green card applicant, the immigrant, and the person petitioning for them. You'd have to uh, show that that relationship exists. So uh, for a parent-child, that's a birth certificate. For a spouse, we're looking at things more like a marriage certificate. If you haven't, particularly if you haven't been married long, you're going to have to show other pieces of evidence um, joint property ownership, uh, joint residence. If you have kids together, that's wonderful. You can show a birth certificate, and that tends to be pretty good evidence that your relationship is, is um, the legal term of art, is bona fide. Um, so if you can prove that relationship, the next thing you need to move on to is identification documents of the immigrant applicant for the green card themselves. So now we're looking at the immigrant's uh, photo ID, government-issued uh, immigrant's birth certificate, and one of the tips that you need to know on the birth certificate is, um, you know, also under the Trump administration, they're, they're nitpicking a little bit more on the documentation you can submit, and they're insisting on only accepting the birth certificate, uh, the, the type of birth certificate mentioned on the U.S. Department of State website. And so, um, again, that's just one tip, and those are the kinds of tips that we'll address more directly in the webinar. So uh, stay tuned and make sure you 
click on the link and sign up for the webinar. Uh, there will be more information coming. And this is a webinar we plan to repeat. So if you're watching this video far in the future, don't hesitate to click on the link in the video description and see if we can't still help you out. Um, the next thing you'd want to show is evidence of lawful entry to the country. Uh, you can only adjust status if you have a lawful entry. You can still adjust status if you have a lawful entry, but your status expired. And so that's another issue that we would uh, directly address in the webinar and might be of interest to you. Uh, so you'd show evidence of your lawful entry via a passport stamp, via a form I-94. I um, and so those are the kinds of things you'd put together. At this point, I want to transition into the kinds of documentation you'd have to show, uh, you'd have to, to submit to overcome that public charge grounds of inadmissibility. So we're talking about the petitioner's tax transcripts. We're also talking about um, the tax transcripts of, of the immigrant applicant. So if the immigrant applicant uh, has filed taxes in the U.S., has worked in the U.S., uh, you're going to want to file those taxes with your I-944, your green card application. And then additionally, if, if that person has filed taxes with their home country outside of the, U in the United States, you need to show the last year's foreign income taxes as well. Whatever documentation proves that you've filed that, you'll have to provide that to us uh, when we apply for the, for the green card. The other kinds of issues that are, are more I-944 specific have to do with uh, documentation about your assets and resources, documentation about your liabilities and debts, your credit report and score, which we've already handled in another video, and we'll provide a link to that video in the video description, specifically about the documenting that credit report and score. A lot of immigrant applicants don't have a credit report because they couldn't get uh, a credit card because they don't have a social security number. So if that's you, look for that other video and definitely sign up for the webinar. Um, other evidence that you'll need to, to show is evidence of health insurance, or if you don't have health insurance, you have to show that you have the money to pay for your own health care. Um, what we're recommending to all of our clients currently is get health insurance. And then finally, uh, evidence of education and skills. So I just want to review a couple of these requirements. Under assets and resources, you would only show evidence of assets that can be converted into cash within the next 12 months. Um, so, you know... <laughs> You wouldn't uh, necessarily show assets that, that can't be converted into cash. Uh, even so, they still want you to show also, for example, the net cash value of your real estate holdings. Well, how, how would you show that evidence? That's something we address more directly in the webinar. Um, you would also show all your checkings and savings account statements for 12 months. Uh, and then also, you know, the value of your cars. The car value is only something you'd need to show if you have more than one family vehicle. Uh, and so that's, again, something we'd address more uh, in more detail in the webinar. You also have to show uh, statements for debts, including student loans, credit cards, or any other debts that have been incurred with, within uh, the family if it's a spouse petition uh, or that the immigrant currently has if it's, say, just a parental permission or child uh, petition, um, any debts or liabilities that the immigrant applicant has. Finally, we get to the credit report and score. Again, a lot of, a lot of immigrants don't have a credit report or score, and we deal with that uh, tip in another video in the video description, so take a look. Um, and then we're also recommending everybody to get health insurance. As far as education and skills, there are lots of ways that you can document this. I mean, you could always just submit a sworn statement that says, I'm fluent in English. Uh, but typically, we'd like to see results of a TOEFL test um, or some kind of diploma from some kind of English certification course. And then if you have a degree from your home country, uh, it's important to get an equivalency uh, evaluation. And there are actually links to uh, an organization that can give you that equivalency evaluation in the instructions for the I-944. And there are other ways that you can demonstrate uh, English fluency or job skills, for example, letters from employers and those kinds of things. So again, we address the documentation requirements for the I-944 in a lot more detail in the webinar. I look forward to seeing you there. I hope that this video has been helpful and that's provided some tips for you. Uh, and good luck with the green card process. Uh, we know from firsthand experience that it's gotten a lot more difficult. And we're trying to do what we can to help people apply in a simplified, streamlined manner. Um, so come look for us, tinginwilliams.com. And we'll be online with more tips and information moving forward.